This week, we're reading Wolf Speaker by Tamora Pierce, otherwise known as... Welcome to Do You Lap Such a Perfect Town. Hi, readers. I'm Jordan. And I'm Katie. And welcome to Not Another Heroine Season 2, the podcast where we break down the best and worst fictional heroines of any genre. <laughs> Because that's what we do now. <laughs> Want to see what's next on our TBR list? Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Instagram for a sneak peek at upcoming content or to help us pick our next book. The dog book. The needless amount of animal interaction book. There are a lot of animals. There's so many animals. <laughs> the animals have more character development sometimes than our main heroine does. Yeah. Because Flicker, like the fact that I, you know, remember the, the name. squirrel. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like that says something. The the wolf pack leader, what's his name, uh, sticks more in my brain. In this Shadow book. Fang. That he, doesn't sound right. but bro- Broke Fang. <laughs> oh, Broke Fang. There yep, we go. There we go. See, <laughs> we we're close. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was weird. That was. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we have the same, I guess, emotions about Wolf Speaker. Yeah. 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 I didn't like the fact that towards the end, when she would shape shift, feels no, uh, it feels yucky. It feels real gross, and <laughs> yeah. I don't, I can't put my finger on why. I it just know. feels uncomfortable. Yeah. Also, even not the shape shifting, but her like transferring her consciousness into an animal to yeah. look through. Because how does that work? Well, it's magic, so it doesn't work. <laughs> well, I- <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I mean, like, if the animal didn't want to do what she wanted it to do, what would happen? She'd say, move, bitch. I, that's what I mean. Because <laughs> like, then it's kind of like yucky. Like, if she was, like, slightly more evil. Uh, well, she kind of yeah does that. Yeah. That's what I mean. There's some ethical questions I have about mm. this <laughs> ability. And, <laughs> frankly, I have a problem with her eating meat. And I know that yeah. changes in book three, yeah. uh, Emperor Mage, but no. Like... She- because if you can like understand like even i not being able to share a mind with an animal feel a little bit like queasy about eating animals especially when i see the chicken truck i saw it the other day oh, on no. a bad day and it was just icing on the top maybe i should explain the chicken truck yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> i know the chicken truck i read or something on the chicken truck uh, so if i am late to work do 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 sorry do 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 oh <laughs> Well. <laughs> if you were wondering this is this is the vibe right this now is what we do. <laughs> um yeah but if i'm late to work which you know to just put salt in the wound there is this semi truck that goes in the same direction i do on the highway and it is full of little chickens and little cages and it's always cold out and they don't have really any kind of like walls or anything it's just like a I'm bunch of start crying. I know. <laughs> I watched the chicken documentary and I, I stopped eating meat for three years. Yeah. yeah. It's just so sad because they look so like cold and like they don't know where they're going. And uh. <sighs> So if I feel even that like level of emotion and then you're like sharing the body of animals and you're still like, yeah, I just turned it off and I eat them. It's like, that's kind of fucked up. Like, <laughs> you don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah. Just uh. one of many problematic elements we've identified in. Yeah the series i will say i love the lizard dude oh the basilisk yeah he's which a- what did you imagine this looked like um i imagined a komodo dragon on two feet okay yeah i did too but like a thin like emaciated komodo yeah. dragon <laughs> but like why is he emaciated <laughs> i i don't it's, know it's weird but yeah, yeah he's probably the best character like mm-hmm. character yeah i, I just like one. the fact that he eats like dessert rocks <laughs> Yeah. Like, I, I feel that. <laughs> I imagined him with, like, spectacles and, yeah. like, a plaid blazer with mm-hmm. little elbow patches. Yeah, uh, kind of a Holt character mm-hmm. from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit proper, but, like, a little bit, like, I'm hanging out with these fucking idiots, but it's kind of fun. <laughs> I will never admit that, but it's kind of fun. <laughs> That's how I imagined him. That's perfect, actually. Dane and Numa are like off 
camping again or something like touring the kingdom that's where i was confused because like were they hanging out to begin with or did they get the summons from the wolves and then they went to go i think they were out on some sort of mission for the king and that checks out and then they got the wolf summons so I thought it was super interesting that the perspective that we open the book with is the wolf. I kind of liked it. I like dug it. <laughs> we could have stayed in that perspective. Yeah. We're just going full send back into like elementary school reading where it's just like all those like red wall. Well, and- yeah, I was going to say, welcome to red wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's actually what kind of all the animal miss it's like red yeah. wall adjacent. Yeah. Because I just like, I appreciated the fact that when we get Broke Fang's perspective, he's immediately like, why do I have all these thoughts? Because like, same. A very <laughs> introspective wolf. Yeah. He's like, I don't want to be thinking these things. Like, it was so much better when I was just like vibing out and now I have like moral thoughts. <laughs> yeah. He's very conflicted about it yeah. and he's not happy. <laughs> no. That's what I like about it. He's like, God damn it. <laughs> well, these are the same wolves who saved Dan when the villagers like or mm-hmm. the thieves attacked and killed her mom and yeah. burnt her house down because that whole like backstory is really fucking sad oh. just the fact that like they like chased after her and then she like went full psycho and got adopted by this like yeah band of lost wolves. her humanity for yeah. several months and then they like went and like attacked the like people like it's pretty dark yeah. like for a ya yeah. book for a borderline <laughs> children's book yeah. yeah but they i guess there's mining happening and they're like mm-hmm. ruining the forest that the wolves hunt in and they're mm-hmm. like oh the human that lived with us can save us and communicate with the other humans i just love that the wolves were like can you tell your like dudes to stop like fucking up what we got going on <laughs> that's it like that's the first third of the book which yes. is the wolf saying hey talk to your people i talk to my people and we're good <laughs> somebody's gonna eat someone <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> basically yeah just deforestation for mining because what is that called when they like open up the whole like face of the planet to mine uh, oh uh, i i know what you're talking about i know i've heard the word but it's completely escaping my brain yeah it's not gonna i'm not no. it's <laughs> yeah they're doing that though <laughs> and so i guess they come across the wolves like her new mare do um yeah because that was the part that i was a little bit hazy on because like how does the wolf know where to meet them magic and <laughs> yes magic. <laughs> so they're like in a cave and then the badger appears too like, mm. so they've mm-hmm. they've reunited with the wolves mm-hmm. the wolves are explaining the situation and they like oh, okay this is kind of weird <laughs> but you know whatever can someone translate <laughs> but this fucking badger god that appears <laughs> again and just basically schools numer like you dumb human i love him so much because he's so mean for no reason <laughs> he's like a crotchety almost grandpa yeah like you need to have a cup of coffee before you interact with him but he's like eight coffees deep and still not yep. nice <laughs> um and then this is when dane learns that like at this point in the book that she can project her consciousness onto other animals because prior to that she wasn't really doing that yeah she was just like communicating with them and mm. the badger's like okay next step you didn't you didn't get that like obvious you know yeah. next progression you're a minor <laughs> god so this is a thing you can do yeah it's like i'm gonna need you to project your brain into animals and control them and she's like i can do that and he's like you fucking you. motherfucker <laughs> she's a little um flighty yeah very just like this is gonna sound really really bad oh no um i'm sure you've seen like the memes and the reddit threads about horse girls yeah she's a horse girl yeah but, like, not aware she's a horse squirrel. A horse squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that came out that way. <laughs> but kind of, like, uh, to the to the detriment of everybody around her, she's yeah. just kind of like, oh, me and my animals, me and my horses. Do, do, do. Yeah. I guess I can do some reading and learning. And- <laughs> it's like, girl, use your brain. <laughs> <Yeah>. Please. <laughs> she's just not very bright no which is i think where i didn't love um later on you know as they tried to tackle this like deforestation mining issue um all of a sudden she's like a general strategist military campaign to take over you know what i mean it's yeah. like no girl you're 14 mm, <laughs> you know? not happening it's like i have some doubts <laughs> like Maybe it'd make more sense if, like, Broke Fang was, like, directing this whole thing. I would accept that more than Dane. Dane. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, when you're great. 14, like, you have no thoughts. <laughs> That's the borderline uh, age where you're, like, almost thinking you're an adult, but you are not even close yeah. to being an adult. And it's a, it's a gray area for everyone because adults don't know how to talk to you and yeah. children don't know how to talk to you. Yeah. 
and you like lack empathy. Like I know that sounds really bad, but oh, like no. middle Fourteen. schoolers are evil, heinous. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how like middle school, junior high teachers oh, exist absolutely not. day to day. Uh uh-uh. uh, because you know they get fucking roasted at all times. My ego could not handle no. <laughs> some fucking fourteen year old being like your haircut. Yikes! <laughs> and we're like, ah! <laughs> okay, so they meet the wolves, but Numair's like, we have to go to like a castle nearby or something. Yeah, because uh. There was a rider company that got like burnt. oh like brutally murdered like yeah. they find the the horse skeletons burning. yeah huh, no they're like we need to talk to someone about this so <laughs> they go to an inn and mm-hmm. this is kind of where it's a little Yucky. squeamish yes. because Numer insists on like two rooms uh, for propriety's sake yeah except they have a connecting door which like point because mm. even the inn keeper has some kind of like weird eyebrow raise and it's like bro like what the fuck are you doing yeah. <laughs> yucky because i feel like this was the first tidbit we got of yeah. like weirdness hints of yeah mm, and kind of like mm, don't like that i'm gonna skip past that part uh-huh. yep so yeah they're at the end and then they get invited to dinner because they they come across tristan who's like an old mage buddy not like a frenemy of numeris oh yeah at the Mm. Yeah, so I think they meet him at the inn. He's like, hey, come to the castle. There's like a dinner party or something. Oh, I trust you with my life. So yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't remember. <laughs> I hope that's right. Uh, I just remember the weirdness and then her like playing with the little mice in her hands at yeah. the kids' table. <laughs> okay, so again, they go to the castle after meeting Tristan, who's kind of like slimy, shady, wizard, but like... Super sus immediately. Yeah, you know he's not a good guy, okay? It's just not going to play out well for him. They go to the castle. They meet, like, Yolene. Is that her name? Yes. Mm. <laughs> sure. Okay. There's a, there's an evil bitch lady who's also... <laughs> and she's got a little sister named Mara who's, mm-hmm. like, 11. And mm. then this is, like, I felt it was another ploy on the author's part to put Dane in that childish, like, mm. category because she literally makes Dane sit at the kid's table. Yeah. <laughs> Like Dana's banished yeah. when yeah. she's been traveling the country with who with her like sorcerer mentor like saving the fucking world. Yeah. And it's just funny because they're like, hey, hey, child. <laughs> and then they go on and drink wine and talk about adult things. <laughs> yeah. And they say that in the book. Yeah. Adult things. Yeah. Like, and Dana's just sitting <laughs> yeah. there playing with her animals and she's yeah. like looking at Mara, who's three years younger than her. Oh, you child. Yeah. It's like, um, girl. <laughs> no. <laughs> Check you're, yourself. <laughs> you're actually closer than your future love interest. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Yucky. Ooh. I just like, uh, I kind of liked Mara's character because at first she was like a little bit annoying because she was like scared of everything, but she very quickly was like, oh, these mice aren't that bad. I kind of wish she was the main character. In I do too. Books, just- she kind of gives me uh, Lena Marmont from Game oh. of Thrones. Oh, yes. Exactly like yeah. that. She That's was exactly- such a cool character. Yeah. That's how I imagined. Just like a little bit shy, but then like, Fuck it. Because <laughs> yeah. that's basically her story arc. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. So uh, at the dinner party, Dane's like, well, uh, we came here to help the wolves and I don't have an opportunity to speak. And so she gets out of her chair and like. Uh, it's so cringy. It's so cringy. Like, I, like, I wasn't that invested in this story, but even <gasps> this scene, I felt like my shoulders hitting my ears. Like, yep. why did you have to do this? She like stomps up to Tristan and Yolene and like the adults table and says, what are you doing to fix the wolves problem and the deforestation? <laughs> like she <laughs> like, Yeah. It's bad. <sighs> I, I could feel your cringe because like you – have like a bit about this and i could feel the cringe through the words that Uh, this was just (laughs) akko she rudely interrupts everything (laughs) oh yep and everyone laughs at her like go back to your little child's table it's okay it's like i kind of get it but also like that's kind of mean (laughs) very and numer goes along with it that i did not like because he was totally just vibing out with his like wizard friends and the lady and he's like what the fuck are you doing? Like, you're embarrassing me. It's yeah. like, oh, that's, that's kind of me. Yeah, very. <laughs> she's a, a child. Yeah, <gasps> she's like 14. <laughs> trying to do her best. Yeah. So, like, party ends. They all go to bed. And then Dane's woken up in the middle of the night by Numer. <laughs> He's like, we need to go. <laughs> they tried to poison me. And so, like, they get on a horse and, like, leave. Like, gallop off in the middle of the night. And I thought this was cool. He created a, they call it a simulacrum. Uh... 
Sure. <laughs> a copy of himself mm -hmm. to send off in a different direction for the for the bad guys to chase after. So at this point, they're not quite certain to like what's going on. They know something bad is happening, and this is Dunlath, right? The, oh, the kingdom they're in. I yes. just pictured Dunlap from Shrek. Oh, Duloc? 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 Welcome to Duloc, Shrek 2001. Sure. Started with uh, a D and a U, so it works. <laughs> I'm sorry, I tried to keep it together. Welcome to Duloc, That is Duloc. <laughs> so what? Uh, that's where New Mayor and Dane just left. I can control myself. <laughs> so they just left Duloc. Uh, um, and they have to separate. Yes. New Mayor rides off on his own. Dane's like, I'm gonna go help the wolves again. Because <laughs> I, I also did not love this part because. He's kind of like, Dane, what are you doing? And she's like, I have to help the wolves. Like, they're not going to understand that people are just laughing at them and don't think their problems are real. And he's like, okay, but I got to go tell King Jonathan that there's a bunch of sus stuff happening here. And he just like leaves a 14 year old to <laughs> on her own. <laughs> yeah. On her own. Because that's normal. Yeah. New Mare is making some like rookie mistakes here. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, they find out that there's like opal mm. mining and opals are yeah. like a magical conduit type thing. Yeah. yeah, and, and there's some like, animals. Yeah, <laughs> there's some new magical creatures. Yeah, that's that's most of the book, honestly. So then the, there's the barrier thing. Oh yeah, because that happens after. Like they were trying to keep Numer there in Duloc or whatever, and then um, he like. I was about to use a not great word. Um, <laughs> what word were you going to use? He squirted out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jordan almost fell off her chair. <laughs> that was not the word I was expecting to come out of your mouth. Uh, Jordan is looking at me I'm like I committed a war crime. <laughs> crying. <sighs> But he like skadoodle out before they can. <laughs> She's crying. <laughs> Their her face is wet. <laughs> okay. Everything this is... episode is going downhill. Everything is fine. <laughs> <sighs> but he got away. <laughs> <laughs> you have to keep narrating because I can't. <laughs> yeah. So he got out before the big dome came down. And so now Dane is stuck on one side and he's stuck on the other. And he's like, oh, no, Jordan is still laughing. <laughs> Barrier <laughs> separated. Dane goes off to the wolves. Numa disappears. She meets. So as she's like mm, having friends with the wolves and like living with their pack, she's watching the like the wolf puppies. It's super cute. Mm hmm. And then as she's, like, babysitting, she yeah. meets uh, a cold fang. Oh, I forgot about this dude. Yeah. Did not like this. Ominous. <laughs> no. Very ominous. It's, so this is a Komodo dragon slithering on the ground on all mm -hmm. fours. Mm -hmm. But it also has, like, Dementor energy. Yeah. Very cold. Yeah. Um, uh, because, like, everything turns cold around them, and you're like, what the fuck is following me? And the little wolf puppies try and save Dane and attack it. Oh, and it's so it, sad. And it can't. So Kitten, the little dragon, like is able to bite through the cold fang a little bit, but it's, like, not enough. Mm -hmm. And then our favorite character shows up. I know his name isn't Ska, but... <laughs> it's, it's like, Taka. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ska feels better. Yeah, let's, let's go with <laughs> Even that. Even though I don't like Ska music. <laughs> no. <laughs> and he, like, scares it off, mm -hmm. basically, or turns into stone. Uh, I think turns it into stone. There's some kind of stone turning into thing happening. I don't know who t whose talent that is or how, but uh, yeah, Cold Fang's dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so then he starts chilling with Dang. The yeah. entire, like, he just joins the wolf pack and's like, I'm going to hang out with you guys because you're fun. Mm -hmm. Emaciated Komodo dragon on hind legs, though, this time. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then shortly after this, Mara. Um, the just 11, like pops up. Yeah. She <laughs> runs away from home because I don't, I don't remember why. She was just. Oh, because uh, I kind of like. I kind of like this part because we get like girl friendship for the first time, 
Um, but uh, Mara runs away and she's like crying, and Dana's kind of like condescending to her. And I'm like, girl, the way what? a 14 year old is condescending. Yeah, but uh, it turns out that Mara overheard her sister like doing a bunch of trees and stuff, and she's like, um. I'm not really down with that because you're also like destroying our country at the same time. Um, I need to go tell someone that you're planning to overthrow our government. Uh, yeah. And so she runs away and she's all stressed about it. And Dane's like, uh, they're going to what? <laughs> yeah. And that's when um, sassy, gossip-loving Marmot comes up. Oh, also, Stormwings are like living jointly with Mara's family at oh, the castle. Yeah. Um, it's Lord Rickash, which is probably my second favorite character. He's kind of sassy and snarky but he's like i love mara god damn it yeah that was that was cute yeah because dane is immediately like kill the fucking storm wing and mara's like that's my buddy though the moral lesson of this book uh because there has to be a moral lesson yes it's, it's, yeah, it's this book. <laughs> is that oh just because they look bad doesn't mean they are bad and you can't judge a book by its cover yay woo moral overcoming your prejudices huzzah yeah we're so. better people yeah so dan gets over her stormwing thing and she realizes that uh lord rickash the stormwing has been taking care of mara like as like a pseudo parental figure oh it's so, yeah. <laughs> so cute yeah she's like you're not that bad i guess and he's like fuck you and she's like maybe you're a little bad still <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah i guess I, when do they decide that they're gonna start like guerrilla warfaring? Because well, they realize that the magical creatures that are like the ogres, like remember that cool ogre farmer chick that shows do? Oh yeah, because they've been using ogres to like mine, but they're really being treated horribly, yeah. like slaves almost, mm -hmm. and they never get fed. And then we get this like ogre huntress who's like, I'm going to stage a rebellion. But I feel like that happens later, doesn't it? it? Like, what happens in the middle of this book? I don't know. I feel like the middle of the book is just a lot of, like, note passing across the barrier between Numer and Dane. And Dane, like, learning her magical abilities to, like, inhib like inhi inhibit? Inhabit? Inhabit. There we go. <laughs> uh, other animals, like, minds. Yeah. That seems to be the bulk of the middle. Yeah. Because other than that, like... What happens? I'm not <laughs> certain. It's all a blur. Like, I really kind of skimmed this one. This... In our rating category, this falls into, like, I had to finish it. Yeah. It was homework. Yeah. And I feel like the end was kind of rushed. Like, for all the, like, nonsense happening in the middle, it's like, why did you, like, jam-pack the end with, like, an entire rebellion? <laughs> okay, so that's similar to Wild Magic, though. Well, that is true. Same pattern. Yeah. Build up, build up to massive battle that gets resolved in five pages. Yeah. She's so, like, this book can't be longer than 320 uh, pages. I gotta wrap some shit up real quick. <laughs> yeah. So she reunites with Numer. Like, he recruits all, like, the armies and stuff. They raid Dunlap. Dun Dun yeah. Because, like, uh, they have to break the barrier, but the barrier is enchanted by all the wizards that are hanging out at Dunlap. And so there's, like, a model of the barrier that... Dane has to go find and destroy. Yeah, there's more like spy stuff happening. It's and then there's like blood, rain, acid oh, stuff. Yeah, they're, they're gonna, gonna poison the entire fucking county. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that doesn't seem very smart. That's not smart. <laughs> That's not what something like a real person would do. Uh -uh. And then uh, they have to like time it so that all of this stuff is happening at the same time. But there's like mercenaries somewhere in this too. <laughs> there's so much going on. Basically, there's a battle. There's bad people. Numer ends up turning um, Tristan, the frenemy that they met later, mm -hmm. into an apple tree. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then like Dane rounds up Yolene and she's imprisoned or something. Oh, yeah. Because uh, that's towards the end. Because the dude that she's been like dinking with or whatever, he killed himself. Because he's like. Dinking with? Um, going around town with? Uh, <laughs> whatever you want to go with. Because <laughs> he's like married, I thought. Or oh, maybe not. I don't, know. I don't know. There's some like weird like yuckiness. Uh, he killed himself because he's like, yeah, I committed treason and this isn't going to end well. I'm just going to like kill myself. 
And then the older sister, Yelene or whatever, like ran away. And then Dane, for whatever reason, has some like wild beef with this woman. And so she transforms herself into a wolf to go like hunt her uh, yeah. down <laughs> yeah. like an animal. Because <laughs> like the end is pretty like gruesome. Very. Because <laughs> they're like scenting and she's with the wolf pack and they're like, you know, smelling her fear and the horse's fear. And then like she gets like yeeted off the horse because the horse is scared of the wolves. And then they like, pretend they're gonna eat her and she's like pissing herself in the ground like it's like really like (laughs) graphic (laughs) but then dane turns back into a human and she's like no you have to face justice (laughs) like i'm glad you didn't eat someone like that's nice (laughs) yeah but that's pretty much it i'm not quite sure how everything concludes specifically yeah we're we're bad book reviewers on this one yeah well i mean it's just like like what <laughs> this book just was so much filler because yeah. let's be honest all right happy ending they get the bad guys because that's what you expect to get in this kind of book nobody dies nobody dies yeah. dane gets more magical powers. she's getting new magical powers in every book yeah again i just don't understand how this 14 year old like planned and conducted this simultaneous multi-location coup d'etat like rebellion all at the same time that was somehow successful with minor casualties like i don't know that anyone actually died and you have like animals and like humans and ogres all fighting together, but they just met each other like a week ago. It's just- about a week ago. Sorry. <laughs> Continue. I, I can't say that without singing this song. <laughs> it's just, I hate to bring it back to Crown Duel, but Mel was like 16, 17 when she was like leading a militia and, yeah. and doing raiding parties. But she was still like not childish in it, but like doing child acts during it like they were just doing sabotage and like the adults were you know what i mean like it was more within her realm of possibility and Mm -hmm. she still didn't really understand all the like political stuff going on but like somehow dane is like able to like just like magically like whip up this (laughs) it's just it feels like regardless of who the the reader like the audience is for it should be able to stand on its own no matter how old you are when you're reading it and this doesn't Mm mm-hmm I mean, the animal stuff was like kind of cute, like Flicker, the squirrel. Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't like the nighttime, but I will run around and do bad shit because these guys tried to eat me once and I'm going to fucking kill them. (laughs) He was cool. Yeah. He was just like a psychotic squirrel, which kind of checks out. (laughs) Have you noticed that there's like a main secondary animal character in each of the books? Hmm. We have Flicker in book two. We have, we'll get to Zek in book three. Yeah. Cloud in book one. Formulaic much? I did not even think about that. Hmm. Anyway, that's Wolf Speaker. <laughs> lots of animals. Lots of unrealistic it. battles. <laughs> and Dane and Numeric continue to get weirder. <laughs> <laughs> that's honestly, it's go gross. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unvoluntarily from our shelf to yours. <laughs> we'll see you on the next page. Listen, we post new episodes every Monday and Wednesday on Spotify, Apple, and Amazon. Thanks for listening. Bussin'. <laughs>